Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for being here today to talk about uh, a topic that is so, um, so important to all of us. And that is to think about the sustainable development goals and how we can better integrate them into the ways that we operate as an industry. Uh, so first, uh, a little welcome from, uh, from all of our organizations. We have uh, over uh, 30 member organizations that together represent over 100,000 individuals um, in nearly 100 countries. And uh, one of the things that we do as an organization is come together to look at issues that none of us can, can do independently or on our own. And one of those things that we really need to tackle as a society and as an industry is thinking about the sustainable development goals. Um, so I do believe really that, um, that all of us have something to contribute on this topic. So I'm going to encourage everyone to use the chat functions and to share a little bit about what you're doing uh, to integrate the sustainable development goals into your events if you've already started. Um, but for those of you that haven't, and maybe this is uh, new information for you, um, I like to think of the sustainable, de sustainable development goals as really uh, a roadmap for us to think about um, for, the, for a stronger and more resilient future. These are 17 goals that if we can all work together to collaborate on, we will secure a better future for all. So as I mentioned, I would encourage you to really share how you're integrating the sustainable development goals into your events. So I must say that the last, uh, last few months have really been uh, very different for, for all of us. And um, planning for, for IMAX and thinking about um, you know, what sort of education we were going to provide, it's, it's really been um, something that I really had to take a step back, as all of us have, and really think about, well, what is the information that we need today? How do we remain focused? And one of the quotes that has really resonated um, quite a bit for me is this quote from uh, Patricia Espinosa from the U UN Climate Change Executive, Executive Sec Secretary. And, uh, and her quote was that COVID-19 is the most urgent threat facing humanity today, but we cannot forget that climate change is the biggest threat facing humanity over the long term. As soon, economies will restart and this is a chance for nations to uh, recover better, to include the most, most vulnerable in those plans, and a chance to shape the 21st century economy in ways that are clean, green, healthy, just, safe, and more resilient. And for me, this, um, this has really been a, a call to action uh, because we, we have the, the immediate need to, to act on uh, COVID-19 but we can't forget that there are other issues uh, that we need to remain focused on. And we need to take this time to really think about when our industry comes back, are we going to be well positioned to address the goals? So one of the ways that I find um, is really helpful is, and we mentioned that there are 17 goals, but within those, there are actually specific targets. So I've selected a few, uh, a few of these targets that I find are uh, particularly uh, resonate well with, uh, with our industry. And um, things like uh, maintaining the genetic diversity in food production. I think that uh, you know, events are a great place for people to try uh, new ingredients that they might not otherwise um, have an opportunity to try. And this is a great way for us to, uh, to educate people about different, uh, different food products that they can be integrating into their own menus. Um, certainly, we can talk about uh, gender equality and ensuring full participation, uh, fighting communicable, communicable diseases as well. So that's the first, um, the first one of these um, targets that I want to focus in on is really this need to fight communicable diseases. Uh, we will need to redesign uh, meetings and uh, think about the entire attendee experience from the point that they leave their homes to the point that they return. Uh, the Events Industry Council has appointed, uh, through our APEX Commission, a COVID-19 business recovery task force. And um, there are resources already on our website, and you can go and visit uh, eventscouncil.org slash coronavirus uh, to find some more information on this. And this is uh, the place where we will be adding more information on a regular basis. But thinking uh, more broadly about how uh, events have been integrating uh, the sustainable development goals and specifically number three, good health and well-being. 
I think IMEX is a great example of that. Uh, so uh, typically IMEX has had their IMEX run and uh, has been promoting self-care. And that these are really great initiatives that we can all learn from and, and integrate. But we also have to think about, well, what about during this pause? What, uh, what are some of the things that, uh, that we can do immediately? And I love that IMEX has not given up on this goal. Uh, so they've actually have the IMEX still running campaign that is, uh, that is going on right now. And I think I saw someone uh, pop up in the chat that's affiliated with, uh, with this program. So if you'd like to share a little bit in the chat about, uh, about what you're, how, how this has come about, um, and I encourage everyone to join us on, uh, on the 13th of May to, uh, to, to participate in the IMEX uh, Still Running program. Another one that we can look at is on uh, Target 4.7, so Education for Sustainable Development and Global Citizenship. Well, one of the events that I attend, uh, that I've attended for the last uh, couple of years, is the UN uh, uh, Sustainable Development Goals Action Campaign uh, Festival of Action. And it is, uh, it's held uh, annually in Bonn, Germany. And this year, they had to make, of course, the difficult decision, as many events have, to, uh, to postpone their events um, during the COVID-19 outbreak. And uh, what, I, what I really appreciated about this was that they stopped and paused and, and said, well, how can we continue with our mission? Because although the face-to-face -face element couldn't continue, it doesn't mean that the work needs to stop or should stop. And in fact, perhaps it's even a greater call to action that we need to, uh, to step up. So they worked with uh, another organization to develop the Global Hack, uh, which resulted in over 500 uh, people-powered solutions for COVID-19. So I love that there's this, this creativity uh, that's coming up. And you know, really, when I think about our industry, we have so much creativity, we have so much resilience and ad ad adaptability. And what I've found uh, that is inherent in all of our event professionals is that when we are faced with a challenge, we find a solution. We are completely focused on this. And I love that uh, even though we weren't able to meet face-to-face -face, uh, for the uh, Global Festival, Festival of Action, that the work did uh, in fact continue. Um, another one that we can focus in on is on uh, gender equality. Uh, so, or if you're meeting in a virtual environment, we can still think about gender equality. We can still continue to think about how do we make our events more inclusive. Uh, think, for example, about your registration forms and uh, whether or not you're using inclusive language uh, in terms of uh, pronouns as part of your registration forms. These are easy things that, uh, that we can look, uh, look to changing. We can also think about um, you know, how we can make our events more inclusive from a language perspective. So Global Meetings Industry Day um, happened uh, this past April. And e even though we weren't able to meet face to face, the need to celebrate and advocate for the value of our industry didn't change. So I really want to uh, compliment all of the organizations that, uh, that came together to, to put on uh, Global Meetings Industry Day in a virtual environment, including the GMID Goes Virtual initiative that had an enormous number of people participating. Uh, but I wanted to draw focus to one of the aspects to MPI's uh, virtual edition, which I thought was really, really valuable. Uh, they focused in on making sure that they had uh, closed captioning and live translations available during that event. Um, so this was a way for them to really um, encourage more people to be able to, uh, to participate and to, um, and to be able to follow through with the, follow along with the conversations. So I'd like to uh, ask all of you to share a little bit about um, how are you designing your virtual events or your live events for that matter to be more inclusive and accessible and welcoming. And at the end of this session, uh, Sam is going to be giving us a little bit of a recap of some of the ideas that, uh, that were brought forward by the, by the group. And I'm really excited to learn from all of you. Um, one of the things that um, I find is one of the greatest privileges of being able to talk about this, uh, this topic is that 
every time that I do, I learn something new from the incredible community of uh, event professionals that attend these sessions and are willing to share. Um, so the next, uh, the next one, uh, uh, sustainable development goal target that we're going to be looking at is on uh, clean water and sanitation. So how can we expand um, water and sanitation support to developing countries? Um, one of the programs that uh, IMEX has supported for many years now has been uh, Clean the World, so helping to make hygiene uh, kits here for the, um, for, um, for the homeless or for different uh, charitable organizations that are helping to distribute um, recycled soap around the world. And um, I want to give a uh, thanks to, um, uh, to Courtney Lohman from our Sustainability Committee who shared with me that uh, Clean the World actually now has a, um, an at-home packing party. So they're, uh, they're working with uh, Clean the World to continue to do the great work uh, that they've been doing, but make it available for people in, in their homes. So I, I love this idea of thinking about how uh, community service doesn't have to end just because we're not meeting face-to-face. -face. So applying that creativity. Um, the, next, uh, the next focus area is going to be on uh, target 12.3. So how are we going to go about uh, cutting the amount of food waste uh, per capita in half? And this is, uh, this is a really big opportunity for us in the events industry to think about how we can be better about, about responsible consumption. Um, one of the organizations that has really done some, some great work in this, uh, in this space has been uh, MGM. So MGM has had a food donations program uh, where they have uh, been uh, using uh, flash freezers uh, to help um, store the food more effectively to mi minimize the amount of, of waste that happens from, uh, from their events and from their uh, restaurants. So this has really been uh, able to con contribute an enormous amount of meals to the local community which actually um, also converts to an enormous amount of uh, carbon emissions that are, um, that are saved as well. Uh, but during COVID-19, uh, MGM has actually um, shifted their focus uh, to, uh, to other ways of supporting the community. So they do have a, um, uh, an emergency fund that they've been supplying, but they've also been helping with their kitchens uh, to produce uh, over a thousand hot meals a day from, uh, from their hotels to support the community at this time as well. Another one that we can uh, look at is uh, how we can help reduce uh, waste generation from our events. And this is another uh, major opportunity for us. And one of the ways that we can do this is really to start by shifting our mindset to thinking more about a circular economy. So rather than taking resources, using them, and then recycling them, uh, really thinking about what we can do uh, to keep those materials uh, circulating. So one of the challenges that, um, that we face as an industry is that we tend to use um, permanent materials for creating these temporary environments. So let's think a little bit differently about that. Um, one, of the, uh, one of my favorite stories is from uh, the Salt Palace Convention Center. So they actually had a uh, flooring show that at the end had thousands and thousands of small carpet samples left over. So they actually worked with a local artist to, um, to construct an amazing mural that now is part of the, uh, the art installations at the Salt Palace Convention Center. Um, another example of upcycling, which I love, is uh, from a, a corporate center in, in Sweden, Sigtuna Hörden, and uh, they've actually had all of their uh, uniforms for their staff uh, made from upcycled uh, materials. And um, uh, what's interesting is that uh, even now during, uh, during COVID, uh, they've remained committed to supporting the community. So um, they've... Um, uh, They've been doing lots of food donations. The, the regulations in Sweden um, have allowed for events for up to 50 people, but they have had uh, cancellations and lower attendance. So they've been uh, donating food and they've also been uh, working on uh, uh, making surplus food available to the local communities and donating it through one of the local churches. Um, so as we think about um, materials resource management and switching more to the circular economy, one of the ways that we can do this is really to think about uh, starting by 
using less, uh, using better materials. Really thinking about what's going to happen to our materials after, um, after the event uh, is, takes place. So thinking about donating or upcycling, and I would prioritize those um, first over recycling and composting. Uh, donating or upcycling um, really is, is a more effective uh, use of those materials potentially than, than recycling or composting. And of course, uh, reusing is always best. Um, another area that we really need to focus in on is uh, measuring our climate impact. Uh, so thinking about um, whether or not we can measure and reduce and offset our carbon emissions. And I would like to encourage you to also think about um, measuring and reducing your carbon emissions related to your virtual events. So there are lots of things that we can do uh, to, uh, to reduce our carbon emissions from our virtual events, including things like uh, reducing the amount of uh, streaming video that we're playing. Uh, also want to think about our food choices uh, as a great way of reducing our carbon impact. Um, but uh, looking at your food choices is broader than simply the looking at lower carbon choices. We also need to think about um, whether or not the materials or the, um, the food that is being produced has been produced uh, under fair working conditions, uh, whether or not uh, it is grown locally uh, using organic uh, uh, processes, whether or not it's seasonal, and also thinking about whether or not it's smart food. And what I mean by that is we want to be fueling people with uh, things that are going to enhance their performance. So really thinking through how um, the, the brain, brain friendly choices that we make for our menus. Another area that we can focus on and need to focus on is really helping to protect uh, children from abuse, exploitation, trafficking and violence. And uh, this is a, an opportunity for us as an industry to really be the, uh, the front line in many cases um, in helping to identify uh, victims of, of human trafficking. A lot of the times this is happening in, uh, in our hotels. Um, and so this is an opportunity for us to be educated. Uh, organizations like ECPAT um, are providing training services for, uh, for hotels and for event professionals. And I encourage you to, uh, to integrate uh, uh, this training into your RFPs if you're an event planner. And if you are a supplier, looking at providing this training for your, uh, for your teams as well. We can also look at supporting organizations that are providing employment uh, to uh, survivors of human trafficking. So this is an example of a company called uh, Rethreaded. Um, and they've been manufacturing um, products uh, made from upcycled materials from uh, th this one particular example is from uh, the leather from Southwest Airlines um, seats. So what I would like to uh, next ask you is uh, if you can uh, share some of the ways that you're integrating community service into your virtual or your hybrid events or in into your live events as well. It would be great to, uh, to be able to see some of these examples. So next is a, a little bit of a framework for you in uh, thinking about how you're going to uh, integrate the sustainable development goals. I find that one of the things uh, that's really helpful is to first start by asking yourself, where does your organization have a material impact? Uh, so really thinking through where are the, the uh, biggest impact points and then addressing those. Um, then thinking about your event design decisions. So thinking about whether or not you're making your event inclusive whether or not you can do things that will make, uh, make your spaces more accessible, things like this. And then think about what are the, the actions that you can take to have the greatest impact. So it can be helpful sometimes to have some, uh, some guidance on, on how to go about this. Um, on our website, uh, you can find the principles for sustainable events that do provide some initial ideas for you on how you can integrate uh, sustainability into your, uh, into your events. Um, as well as our provisional uh, sustainable event standards. Um, these standards uh, are checklists that, uh, that cover everything from the event app organizer perspective, uh, accommodations, audiovisual production, destination, exhibitions, food and beverage, and venue. And I would encourage you to, uh, to download those. Um, they're available free on our website, and they have been launched uh, with a one-year provisional status which means that we're hoping to get lots of feedback in this year uh, about how, um, how we can improve these. 
And there are definitely things that we can do to take action today. Um, the first thing that we can do is to really think about how we can build our collective capacity. This really is an excellent opportunity for us to expand our knowledge and to share our knowledge. We can also think about uh, some of the things that we're learning to do better today and think, commit to keeping those good elements going even after uh, COVID-19 resolves uh, because it will resolve and, uh, and we will get back to meeting face-to-face -face, even if it is looking a little bit different. And, uh, and finally, I think it's really important to believe uh, in our capacity to do what's right. Uh, I know that uh, what we're going through today is incredibly difficult uh, and, and I, I'm inspired by the willingness of our entire industry to really uh, do what's right and, and to use that moving forward to also look at all 17 sustainable development goals. Uh, so before we uh, turn it over to Sam to ask, uh, give us a recap, um, I do want to let you know that we have additional resources on our website if you'd like to go and uh, take a look at some of those. And now I'll pass it over to Sam to give us a bit of a recap. Wow, thank you so much everybody who's been participating in the chat online on the Crowd Compass app. If you haven't downloaded it, there is a link that I have shared for you so that you can be asking your questions. Please make sure you do that because we'll be using that for the rest of the day. Mariella, um, frantically trying to work out how to do this <laughs> on an online world. So in terms of STG implementation, we had a couple of interesting things. Peter um, is in Sweden. They have a national certification there for events, including and incorporating, as I understand, all 17 STGs. Is this something that you're familiar with? I'm not familiar with that particular one, but I would love to learn more about it and, uh, and definitely look at how we can make it uh, even more compatible with, uh, with the provisional standards that we've released. That's great. I'm going to try and whisk through some of this because we do have a lot of questions for you. Um, if anybody wants to connect directly with Mariella, if you're in the app, you can connect with her. You'll see her details there as our speaker. So please make sure you do that and then you can connect in and ask your questions. I know she'll be eager to hear some of this best practice. Um, Emma was saying that in terms of implementation, more vegan vegetarian food options and awesome. also utilizing, uh, we had another person utilizing the food, the extra food. Uh, giving that away, um, leading to a sort of zero waste in terms of food and beverage. Um, I think integrating community service online, we, we may have had some whilst the chat's going on. I think people probably because this world of online is still very new for everybody. Absolutely. Um, so I think we're waiting to hear and I think, you know, trying to create like you are a, a collaboration and communication platform. But when you were talking about inclusive, accessible and welcoming events, we had some great feedback from some people. Catriona was saying that they were incorporating these activities into live events and making a positive difference in the lives of others. David was saying to us, there's a fundamental play that will align our industry. Um, we have Cocal Anna Maria. They're offering live translation on our virtual educational events, all their, sorry, on all their virtual educational events. Um, and a point here, Mariella, accessibility is also about respecting people's time. Online events provide the ability to allow participants to engage synchronously as well as, as, well as not. So the interesting about time in terms of accessibility. Absolutely. Some really, really great points. I think we can probably have this conversation uh, ongoing. This should be a, a full day session. But can I get to some questions for you, Mariella? What was the, oh, I've got the answer to that one for you. That's the app. What is the best way to accommodate some of these things in terms of time zones? Respecting, and again, that's, that's in being inclusive and accessible. Right. Um, well, one of the things that... Um, you know, we need to think about is uh, knowing where your audience is coming, is going to be attending from and trying to find, um, find the time that works well or offering things available at, at different times. Uh, I really like the idea of recording sessions, uh, but then rebroadcasting it with your primary speakers available to, uh, to answer some of the questions uh, so that you have that ability to, to connect with the speaker at the same time. Um, 
and and also to really just sort of thinking about um, changing up the times. So you know some of the webinars that we've done, we've done in uh, different times. Typically, you know, for ours, we we um, have gravitated to the time where most of the attendees have uh, have been able to to attend. But we have been shifting some of them as well to uh, to accommodate uh, other time zones, and uh, and also thinking about uh, your uh, your committees. Uh, so thinking about uh, setting up the times for your committee meetings at. Uh, when it will be convenient for more people. There's, you know, with, with the global uh, community, it's never going to be a, a time that, that's going to work for everyone, but, uh, but pro providing some variety can, uh, can help make sure that it's not always the same people that are affected every time. I think we need to factor in, it's a new word, I'm sure it'll be in the, in the dictionary next year, time zoning. Um, there are yeah. also some apps that you can use if people want to connect in with me. You've got my name and my details on the, ba on the, on the badge. I'm happy to share those as well. Mariella, do you have any suggestions or of signposting to where people are including SDGs for online events? Um, people are looking for a bit of inspiration on this. Absolutely. So I think that we're still very much in the in the early days of this. Uh, so I've tried to provide a few examples here, but um, I think that uh, one of our upcoming uh, webinars is definitely going to need to be uh, more specific to the virtual event uh, community and uh, adding some more infographics. Uh, you know, one of the things that um, you know I'm I'm certainly uh, following and monitoring is the amount of uh, carbon emissions um, associated with virtual events and what we can do to improve our carbon footprint uh, from this. And, and also just our digital footprint in general. Um, I don't think that people realize uh, the impact that the uh, data centers have on, uh, on climate impact. So thinking about how we can uh, improve that will be a, an important thing. So keep talking, keep collaborating, keep sharing in places like here in Planet IMEX with this. And remember, if we don't get to your question, do contact Mariella. Thank you for popping your email address up there. Mariella, we've had a question. We've created a protocol for vendors, but I'm still trying to weigh China glassware versus compostable disposables. Again, a big factor with what's happening now. What could you advise co uh, caterers and hotels in terms of that and meeting SDG goals? Yeah, well, I think that there's some, some, new, um, some new technologies that have been developed um, around uh, reusable and compostable, um, which are going to be interesting to, to see how they how they weigh um, uh, compared to some of the other options. Uh, you know, the the experience has always been that uh, reusable from a uh, from an environmental perspective is is preferable. Uh, we do need to make sure that we are um, we have the proper protocols in place for sanitization as well. So making sure that uh, that all of that is is looked after and that we have the proper uh, protective equipment as well for uh, for the people that are uh, working um, as well. So all of these will, will really need to be uh, considered. It's going to be part of the protocols that we're looking uh, into um, into as part of our task force. Speaking of the task force, uh, we had a question. Um, you know, you're, you've got a lot of stakeholders here yeah. in the task force. Do you think that sustainability will now play a bigger role in the industry or will it fade in the background in comparison to the financial and the economical challenges that the industry is facing? That's a great question. And I think that, um, you know, right now we're in a, in a period where we are redesigning and we're rethinking everything about our, uh, about our industry. And that's, that's a really important time to make sure that we're integrating sustainability into every aspect of that redesign. Uh, it's through that intentional uh, action that we'll be able to come back as a stronger, more resilient industry. Thank you for that. I'm going to ask one more and just to let you know that Mariella has got access to these questions via the app. Mariella, I'm sure you'd be happy to look at those and maybe share some of those answers on yeah. LinkedIn. Maybe that would be a good platform to do that. Absolutely. And again, if you do want to contact her directly, then that would be great. Um, one final question. How do you think COVID-19 will affect some initiatives that helped implementing the SDGs, like food donations, single-use plastic, individual sugar, milk, et cetera? How can sustainable initiatives be as important as health measures? 
I think that uh, they need to really be be thought through. Uh, we're, we're definitely going to need to think about um, all of those those types of things. I think that you know the way that food service is going to happen is going to be very different uh, when when meetings return. Um, and at the same time, we need to continue to prioritize uh, sustainability. So. So it may be that uh, some of the, the actions shift, maybe there'll be a uh, higher priority on, on some of the, the actions like the, the vegan and the vegetarian menus that someone uh, mentioned earlier, but it, it's, um, it needs to be uh, an and, not an either or. Thank you for that. I think that's a very good way of closing this particular session.